Okay, we're going to look at another example here where we are finding critical points where the function's increasing and decreasing and local extrema. And so just like we've talked about in the other videos, it's always important to think about domain even if they don't ask you that. And that's from the original function. This function does have some domain restrictions, so that will be relevant when we write our answers for our intervals. Uh, so the denominator is zero when x is plus or minus one. Maybe you want to factor the denominator to help you see that or whatever. Um, but x equals one or negative one, both of those need to be excluded from the domain. So no intervals, I write down later for any answers about increasing and decreasing should include one and negative one. The function's not even defined there, it can't be increasing or decreasing there. Um, all right, other things that you can tell from the original function, things like end behavior, because this is a rational function, end behavior is going to have to do with asymptotes. So I'm not going to write out the work here for this, but I do have some asymptotes. Uh, I have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 1. So that is limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity would help you find that. I also have vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and negative 1. And you can use limits as x approaches 1 from the left and the right. And then same for negative 1 to help you with behavior of the function around those asymptotes. Um, other things that would be relevant for the function are points, in particular intercepts. The uh, y-intercept is always the easiest one to find. You're just plugging in x equals 0. So uh, when I plug in x equals 0, I get y equals 0 squared over 0 minus 1, which is 0. So I have 0, 0 for one point. And then the harder one sometimes to find is when you put in 0 for y. So you set your function equal to 0 and solve for y. Uh, this one, if you multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator, you get 0 equals x squared, which gives you 0 equals x. And so you end up getting the same point. So the only intercept here is both an x and a y-intercept, and it's at the origin. Other things you can get from the original function are points. And so if I find any critical points, I might want to plug them in and get some x, y coordinates for that so that I can answer the question about that. Um, all right, so all of that stuff really just comes from the original function. And then the rest of what I'm asked about, I'm going to need to look at the first derivative. So I need to find the first derivative. You'll be using quotient rule here. So maybe pause the video and write that down and then restart it to check. All right, so with quotient rule, I kind of have a little bit of a mess here with my first derivative. I would probably go ahead and simplify this at least somewhat, uh, since I'm going to be doing some more things with this. Uh, and what exactly you choose to simplify might depend on sort of what's happening in the problem. What I would notice with this one is that if I distribute through this 2x to both terms here, uh, I'll have a 2x cubed. And this last term here at the back is a minus 2x cubed, and so those will cancel. I'm not going to write the step out of distributing through and combining terms just to save some space, but I'll have a 2x cubed and a minus 2x cubed that'll cancel, and then I will also have a minus 2x term left on the numerator. I'm not going to expand out the denominator. Uh, you could, but it probably does not help uh, in this problem. So of unnecessary algebra, but if you really like to expand that out, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so in looking for critical points, I want to think about where this derivative does not exist. This derivative does not exist at x equals plus or minus 1 because the denominator uh, would be 0. Those are not actually critical points, though. So this is a subtlety that I see a lot of students have trouble with, and sometimes even tutors or things like that have trouble with this. So this is a place where the derivative does not exist, but it's not even in the domain of the original function, so they're not technically critical points. Critical points are where the derivative does not exist, but the original function does. So these are relevant points, but really more about the domain 
than about the derivative not existing. Okay, so that's part of why I did this example was to emphasize this little subtlety here. Uh, the other thing that you want to look for when you're looking for critical points is where the derivative is zero. All right, so if I set the derivative equal to zero, uh, I get negative 2x over x squared minus 1, the quantity squared, set that equal to zero. There's a lot of ways you can think through the algebra here. I would think about multiplying through by the denominator. And when I do that, I get 0 equals negative 2x, which gives me x equals 0. That is in the domain of the function, so that actually is a critical point. So that's a critical point. I might, if I had not already done it, put that over here and find a y-coordinate of the point that goes along with that. It just so happens that, that turns into the x-intercept, so I already found that point. Uh, but that is a critical point. All right, at that point, I'm ready to do a sign chart to think about where the function is increasing and decreasing. And so I'm looking for signs of the derivative. This is another place where the domain of the function is important to think about. So I really only have one critical point, but I do have some places where the function is undefined. And so those are not really critical points, but they are places where the derivative might change sign. When I do this number line, I often will put an open circle there to remind myself that my intervals should not include those points at 1 and negative 1 because they're not even in the domain of the function, so there is nothing happening on the function at that, at that point. Uh, all right, but then I am looking at the sign of the first derivative really in four different intervals here. So left of negative 1, between negative 1 and 0, between 0 and 1, and then right of 1. All right, so I'm going to look at this form here. Um, I might notice that this denominator, anytime the denominator is defined, is not 0 anyway. So as long as that denominator is not 0, because of the square here, that denominator is not ever going to be negative. Because of the square here, that denominator will always be 0 or bigger. So not negative. So when I think about the sign of this first derivative, really all I have to think about is what's happening here in the numerator, the sign on the numerator. Um, okay, so I'm going to start over here right of 1. So when I plug in a number bigger than 1, uh, the numerator will be negative and the denominator is positive. So negative over positive is negative between 0 and 1, like 1 half or whatever. The numerator will be negative, the denominator will be positive, negative over positive is negative. I plug in a number between 0 and negative 1, like negative 1 half. I'll have minus 2x, so negative 1 half that I plug in times the negative 2 will make the numerator positive. Denominator is positive, positive over positive is positive. And then left of negative 1, so for example, negative 2, I'll have positive over positive, positive. So those are signs of the first derivative. And so that tells me where the function f of x is increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing. Okay, so my only critical point, the only place where I might have a possible extreme value here is at x equals 0. And because the function on one side is going up and then down, this is a local maximum. These other places are not really critical points here. Uh, so I've actually done all the work, and I'm ready to just go ahead and write down my answers here. All right, so critical points. There's just one, uh, x equals 0, and because that's a point, I should really write an xy coordinate, just one of them, at 0, 0. Uh, I have a local max, which is really the y coordinate of this point, so it's f of 0. So if I hadn't already done that, I would need to go over here, f of 0, which is 0, and that occurs at x equals 0. But this is actually the answer for the local maximum. I don't have any local minimum, so maybe you want to say none. And then I can write the intervals on which the function is increasing and decreasing. All right, so uh, the function is increasing. 
When I'm left of zero, I need to exclude negative one here. So it's increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative one, and then negative one to zero, and decreasing on zero to one, and then one to infinity. So I'm just really summarizing what I've got here in the sign chart. Sometimes I see students that will just sort of do everything except write their answers. And so all of the work is here, but you need to be sure that you also write your answer. Of course, when you're doing online homework, you have to type your answers in. But with written homework, sometimes I'll see students write all this work, but forget to actually write their answers. So be sure that you do that as well. Just having all the work to justify your answer isn't quite the same as answering the question that was asked. All right, try some homework problems.